On tonight's episode of Mr. Norris's In Case You Missed It, we look at the system of checks and balances, which allows for separation of powers in our government and for the branches to chickety check themselves before they riggedy wreck themselves. Hey, hi, hello, and what is up, everybody? It's your host, Mr. Norris, the history teacher with the good hair. And today we're going to be talking about our system of checks and balances inside of our government. That's right. We're going to check yourself before you wreck yourself. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. All right, I'll stop that. But yeah, checks and balances. If you watch my uh, last video, basically checks and balances ensures our system of separation of powers. And what that means is our government is controlled by three branches, uh, all of which have equal power in running our government. All right, our founding fathers believed in that separation of powers and that one branch wouldn't become too powerful and control the government on their own, hence why we have checks and balances. Each branch has ways of checking the other two branches, and tonight we're going to explain some of those, right? So let's start with the executive branch, which is headed by the president, but also makes up the vice president and the president's cabinet. How can they check, if you will, the other two branches? Well, the executive branch can uh, check the legislative branch a couple ways. We're going to focus on some of the big ones. First of all, the legislative branch makes laws, as I went over in my past videos. Uh, and the executive branch can veto those laws or those bills if they do not agree with them. So if Congress creates a law and brings it forward to the president to sign it into order, and he does not agree with that law, he can veto it. Uh, and say that he does not want to pass it, it gets taken off his desk, and there's more steps down the line for it to actually eventually get passed. Uh, how else can the executive branch check the legislative branch? They can propose laws. If the president has a certain agenda that he wants to get passed, he can go to Congress and try to push them uh, to create a bill and eventually lead, lead to a law. Also, the executive branch can check Congress by negotiating treaties with foreign countries. It's perfectly within the president's uh, ability and right, and also the secretary of state, to meet with other countries, agree upon treaties, um, and try to get these you know, pushed forward uh, for the United States of America. However, the legislative branch has final say in approving those treaties. So the president can introduce treaties, they eventually have to get improved. How can the executive branch check the judicial branch? Well, a couple of ways. Um, underneath the Supreme Court, which is the, obviously the main body of the judicial branch, there are 13 district federal courts that hear uh, appeals throughout the country. So the president actually appoints judges to those federal courts. So that's a way that he can check uh, the judicial branch. Other ways, if there is a vacancy on the Supreme Court, the president is given the responsibility for picking the replacement to fill that vacancy. Now, that eventually has to be approved by Congress, but still the president gets the first stab at uh, filling that seat on the Supreme Court. Also, the president can grant pardons. And what that means is if somebody uh, that the president views has been wrongfully accused or imprisoned wrongfully, the president can grant them a pardon and give them a get out of jail free card, no questions asked. That person is let off the hook. And sometimes presidents do that at the end of their terms or at the end of uh, you know their eight years or four years of service. They might pardon somebody who they think is either guilty or is kind of you know some got some kind of link to them in some way. Sometimes it's a little bit sketchy. Uh, to be honest with you, but that's something that our that our president has within their power to do. How can the legislative branch check the executive branch? Well, let's go back to the veto. If the president vetoes a law, that's not the end of the process. Congress can actually override the president's veto with a two-thirds majority vote. Now, that's very hard to do. As I've said before, it's very hard to get politicians to agree on two-thirds or to agree uh, two-thirds majority on anything even if it's like loving chocolate ice cream, it just doesn't really happen. But they can override a veto with a two-thirds majority vote. They also confirm all of the president's appointments. So federal judges, uh, people getting appointed to his cabinet, uh, Congress, the legislative branch would have to approve that first. It's not like he has uh, all the power or you know all the say, they do have to approve it. Congress also has the power to declare war. That's one way that they can check the executive branch. Yeah, the president can, you know, basically dictate our foreign policy, but he can't declare war. Congress can do that. Also, and this is an important one, a big one. Congress has the power to impeach the president. Yes, that is right. What is impeachment, you might ask? Well, it's basically a fancy way of saying firing, right? They can fire the president or other government officials um, for good reason. And some of those reasons might include things like bribery, bribery 
treason, if they are, you know, severely breaking the law, uh, not having conduct that you would, you know, feel as accustomed to being president or a high standing government official, uh, or if they're just wildly, wildly incompetent at the job, they could possibly be impeached. Has it ever happened before? The answer is uh, not really. There's three presidents that have had impeachment hearings against them. Bill Clinton and Andrew Johnson actually did get impeached in the House of Representatives, but were later cleared by the Senate. Richard Nixon probably would have been impeached, but then he just resigned and quit and was like, oh, I am not a crook, and got on a helicopter and flew away, and like literally nobody ever saw him again. Seriously, crazy times. Um, so that's something that they can do, power that they hold against the president. He needs to be held responsible. He or she needs to be held responsible for their actions as they can be impeached. Um, now, how can the legislative branch check the judicial branch? Very similar. They can also impeach uh, justices on the Supreme Court. That's something that they can do well within their rights. They also can propose amendments to the Constitution. If the Supreme Court is trying to block a law that Congress passes by saying that it's unconstitutional, Congress can then pass an amendment to the Constitution that makes that null and void. So they can pass amendments to the Constitution. How does the judicial branch uh, check these other two branches, the executive and legislative branch? Uh, very similar. Basically, think of the judicial branch as uh, the Oprah of the three branches. And they're just standing there saying, what you're doing is unconstitutional, what you're doing is unconstitutional, and what you're doing is unconstitutional. If the executive branch is committing actions that are unconstitutional, the judicial branch can call them out on that and make their actions null and void. Same thing with the legislative branch with Congress. If they're trying to pass laws that the judicial branch feels is unconstitutional, they can say that and that law is dead on the floor unless an amendment is made to the Constitution. So there you have it. Those are some of the big ones. Those are some of the ways our three branches check and balance each other. And the whole point of that was the Founding Fathers putting this into place to make sure that one branch didn't become too powerful and control the whole country on their own. Hope you learned some stuff there. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like, comment, or subscribe. Any of those would be just fine. Remember that history is life. And in the words of George Washington, my buddy back here, the surest basis for public happiness is knowledge. So go out there and get some. Have a good one, everybody.